Right, guys. Uh, last time we talked about uh, compressors, if you still remember from our November 2022 paper, where we're dealing with a single acting, single uh, cylinder. We, 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 we talked about uh, a similar question, but this time the only difference that we have from this question paper of November 2020 is that we are dealing with a double acting. So there we are given a double acting single cylinder air compressor receives five cubic meters of air per second when it runs at this speed per minute. So it is receiving a certain speed at five cube, uh, a certain volume at five cubic meters per second in, uh, in this case, at a volume of five, uh, at, 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 at a speed of 330 revolutions per minute and it's a double acting. This whole part that we see here, it helps us to find the swept volume or the volume of air that is being drawn per cycle. Let, let's just talk about that way. Uh, let me explain this part. This whole part that we are given here, it is going to help us to find uh, the volume uh, of air, the volume of air uh, that is drawn in air in per cycle, uh, the volume of air drawn in per cycle. All right. We want to know what is going to be from this wall, the part, a double acting and that. All right. So what is going to happen is that this volume of air per cycle is simply equivalent, or we are simply talking about uh, the safety volume that we're going to have at the end. Uh, there are same application of our safety volume or the stroke volume. So meaning to say, we are going to take this part here, the formula that we're going to have at the end is going to be Vs is equal to the volume of air. The volume of air is given per second. All right, so this one is going to be volume of air. So we are going to have uh, volume of air. This one is given per second. So what you are going to do in this case, you are supposed to divide by the speed in revs per second also. We are supposed to divide by the speed in revs per second. But since it's a double acting, we are supposed to multiply this by two. So take note there, you are having your speed in revs, all right? This is your speed in revs. Per second, that's why I'm using the small letter there. All right, the two there is for a double acting. So this gives us the swept volume or the, the volume of air drawn in per cycle, which is going to be in a cubic meters. So that is how they are trying to play around with us here. So the question, all right, from the information that you are given later on, the ratio of this, we shall talk about that. But from this whole part, this is the first thing that you're supposed to be thinking about. All right, so meaning to say, just to conclude this, we can even calculate that because we are simply saying our VS is gonna be volume of air in, which is per second. In this case, it's given per second, which is five cubic meters per second, all right? So we have got five over uh, two times N. So this is going to be two times N in revs per second. Our N is in revs per minute. So we have to divide that by 60, 330. Uh, that's 330 here, divide by 60 to convert to revs per second. So that is the whole scenario that you're gonna have. And this is going to correspond to 0 0.455 in cubic meters. That is cubic meters per cycle. Meaning to say per each cycle, we are going to have 0 0.55 cubic meters. That's that's the whole scenario. All right. So let us see uh, the information that we are later given here. Uh, the ratio of balls to stroke, meaning the diameter to the length is 1,5. So you're given the ratio uh, of the diameter uh, to the stroke in this case, which is length or just given as D over L, which is 1 S to 1,5 means 1 over 1,5. So there's a relation between the diameter and the length. If you cross multiply here, it's L times one, which is L is equal to 1,5 times D, which is 1,5 D like this. So it means the relationship between the length and the diameter is that the length is 1,5 the diameter, or you can divide by 1,5, meaning to say the diameter is equivalent. If you divide by 1,5, it will be length over 1,5. So you're going to use this ratio uh, or this ratio. We, we do not know, depending with which one to apply according to the uh, uh, what you are supposed to calculate, which one is in favor of, all right, but that is the ratio that you're given there. 
All right, then the other thing, the initial pressure is 98 kilopascal and the temperature that is at initial uh, point, I talk about P1, so we've got P1, 980. So that's our P198 kilopascal, sorry. And the temperature at the initial point uh, in this case is given as, um, uh, that is 15 degrees Celsius. We add uh, 273 so that we obtain this in kelvins, all right? So we are going to add uh, 273 in that case, which is going to be 288 uh, Kelvin in this case, all right? Then the other thing that we have, uh, there is no clearance volume, we mean there's no clearance there, and the air is delivered at, that is the pressure at delivery, uh, according to this law, so the pressure at the delivery is our P2. So meaning to say we've got P2 at the delivery, which is 900 uh, kilopascal in this case. And also we are given N from the formula, the law that we are given PV to the exponent of N is equal to C. So that means we are given our N being 1,3. So there our N is 1,3. What else? we are given is the gas uh, constant, in this case, 0 0.289. So the gas constant R is 0 0.289 uh, kilojoule per kg uh, Kelvin. All right, so that's it. This is the information that we are given. And the first part of our question here is to calculate or to determine the diameter and the stroke length in millimeters. So we are supposed to find the diameter, the stroke length, and we are supposed to have this in millimeters. All right, so how are we going to have these seven marks for that? All right, so the first part of your calculation was supposed to be from the volume that we calculated. Remember now we've got the volume of air drawn in per cycle, which is uh, Vs. And we understand that Vs is simply taken from where, uh, all right, from the Vs that we calculated, we understand uh, that this is uh, the area times the stroke length. So Vs is equivalent to the area times the stroke length, which is simply pi d squared over four times the stroke length in this case. So with this, we can calculate D or you can calculate L depending with which part you have you substituted. Are you gonna write your formula in terms of D? Are you gonna write your formula in terms of L? It's your choice, that one. So in this case, you can just choose, but uh, if you write in terms of D, it's gonna be, L over 1,5, you write in terms of L is going to be 1,5 times D, all right? This one is up to you. So I'm going to take this one. L is equal to 1,5 D, all right? So if I take L is equal to 1,5 D, what does it mean? All right, remember we have got Vs, which is our Vs here, it's 0, 0,455, all right? So that's uh, Vs, which is 0, 0,455 is equal to pi d squared over four times the length, which is our stroke length in terms of d, L is equal to 1,5 d. So our length there is given as 1,5 d. So that's it. If you wanted to use d, then you, but take note on the d there, you are supposed to square. So it's gonna be complicated now, but you take this, you just substitute direct, all right? There is nothing to, to change or, Whatever. So from this part, we can calculate our D. Uh, also, uh, if we can multiply on top, in this case, we can cross multiply, uh, divide by this and that. So we are going to have at the end uh, 0, 0,455 uh, five, five times 4 can multiply this side, which is equal to pi times 1,5 is 1,5 pi uh, D squared times D. So that's D to the exponent of 2, and this D is going to be uh, to the exponent of three. So in order for us to remove this, we are going to divide by 1,5 pi, uh, both sides by 1,5 pi. So this can cancel. We are going to have d to the exponent of three, which is equal to 0, 0,455 times uh, four, everything over 1,5 pi. So since we have to find the value of d and it's being raised, to the exponent of three in this case, we need to say we're gonna have the cube root, uh, the cube root or sides, or you raise this whole part to the exponent of a third, which is one and the same thing, or you introduce the cube root, it's up to you which one is best for you to apply. So thus you're gonna have the value of D in meters. 
because they have given your volume cubic meters per so meaning to say your diameter is going to be in meters uh which is going to be 0 0.7 uh to 8 to 3 decimal place in meters but the instruction is we are supposed to have this in millimeters so we are going to convert now to millimeters in this case just going to multiply by a thousand uh so if you multiply this by a thousand to millimeters uh that means our diameter is going to be 728 uh millimeters remember uh one meter uh is equivalent to 1000 uh millimeters we simply gonna multiply by a thousand so from the diameter we can calculate the length because there's a relationship that we have between the diameter and the length that in this case the length is equal to 1.5 times the diameter so meaning to say we can obtain the length from the diameter that we obtained in this case. So we so saw that from this formula, the length is equal to 1,5 of the diameter. And we obtained our diameter, which is uh, 728 millimeters. So it is going to be 1,5 times the diameter of 728 millimeters. So thus we are going to obtain the stroke length of 1092 in uh, millimeter right so depending with the rounding off of values that you have applied but uh, that was uh, the condition of our question in this case to obtain the diameter and also to obtain the stroke length so they never asked about this volume but you are supposed to know that in order for you to have it you're supposed to have the swept volume in this case all right 4.12 it was now to calculate the delivery temperature. Always oh, they do ask this person, I do not know why. T2 at the delivery. They, instead of sometimes giving us T1, uh, I mean T2, then they ask us to calculate T1. They don't do that. They just T2, deliver, deliver. I'm not saying it's not like that, but it's, it's, it's more now of this question that they are just saying. Uh, and after that, we know that they're going to ask us to calculate the power. Maybe uh, they are now in short of questions. I don't know. So that is it. Uh, the delivered temperature T2, we just go back to our normal uh, guess laws. We have got P1, we've got T1, we've got R, we've got uh, N. We just find a suitable formula that you're going to use there. So in this case, we talked about uh, the formula. I've been talking about this formula for a long time from our formula sheet. That, uh, all right, so this is 4.12. That's... Uh, we have got T2 over T1, which is equal to, in terms of pressure, it's P2 over P1 to the exponent of N minus 1 over N. All right, so we have been uh, referring to this formula. Let's not act as if we do not have this in our formula sheet. This is what I'm simply saying uh, from this formula. You see, we have been talking about this formula. Uh, so that is the one that you're going to apply. Or you can use the volume, but we do not have all the volumes. So it's best for you to use what uh, the one for pressure. So in order for us to find T2 multiplied by T1, this side is going to be T1 into uh, P2 over P1 to the exponent of N minus 1 over N. That's it. We are going to obtain the power from, we are going to, sorry, the, the, the temperature from there, which is uh, T2. So that's T1. Uh, in this case, our T1 is given in Kelvin's that 288. Okay, so this is 288. So we're going to have 288 uh, into P2, which is the pressure at the exit, our P2, that's 900. So you're going to have 900 Kelvin, uh, 900 kilopascal, sorry, over P1 in kilopascal again, which is 98. All right, everything to the exponent of N minus 1 over N. Remember our N, which is uh, given as 1,3. So we are going to have uh, 1,3 minus 1 over 1,3. So that's it. We have got our temperature in this case in uh, Kelvin, uh, which is T2 is going to give us uh, 480,4266 and so on, which is going to be 427. All right. So that's it in uh, Kelvin. So that's how we play around. That's how we play around. Uh, with these persons and let us check the last part again we talked about this the power in the kilowatts in this case uh, from the formula of the work done having our volume in the cubic meters per second we can calculate power we talked about this formula if you still remember 
So that means we can use P1, VE, uh, and so forth. All right, so there is uh, again a, a direct formula. Uh, it's a direct formula, and we've been talking about this formula. So I'm not gonna waste much time, let's check. All right, let's hope it's not gonna remove my part here. All right, so you can even have our formula here because uh, here everything we have uh, talked about it. All right, uh, no, I'm gonna need this information. Sorry, P1, P2, all right, but uh, let me just have it aside. Okay, just need somewhere to write this. All right, you can even remove this one since we have this, guys. Let me just remove this. So as we saw from our formula, guys, we have uh, which part can we use? Uh, remember the volume uh, in this case is given as um, five uh, cubic meter uh, per watt per second. So it's already in per second. So meaning to say this time, we are not gonna convert anything just like uh, what we had from uh, those other videos that we talked about where we need to convert this and that. This time we're just gonna use as it is so P, which is the power is equivalent to P1 VE uh, into N over N minus one. Some they do start with this part of N over N minus one here, which is fine guys, this presentation, it's a multiplication. So whatever term can start, you can start to write the, what, uh, whatever term that you want in this case, all right? So that is it here, we're gonna substitute uh, P1, which is the pressure. Uh, at the inlet, and we have got our pressure in uh, kilopascal here, which is uh, 98, all right? So that's 98, our P1 there is gonna be 98. So we are going to have 98 into VE, as we saw that our VE is, is already in uh, cubic meters per second. We're gonna use this, it's, uh, it's cubic meters per second, it's five cubic meters per second. So there's nothing that we are going to change there. We are just going to write this as five uh, times n over n minus one. So our n, remember, is 1,3. So it's going to be 1,3 over uh, 1,3 minus one uh, into P2 in this case, which is the pressure uh, at the exit. Remember, our pressure at the exit P2 is uh, 900. So that is going to be 900 kilopascal. Um, all right, over P1, remember P1 was 98 uh, kilopascal to the exponent of N, and our N is 1,3. So it's going to be 1,3 minus 1 over N, which is 1,3. Everything minus 1. So that's it. Uh, we are going to obtain the power, which is actually the work done in kilojoule per kg. So that will be in kilowatts, which is 1,4, uh, 18, uh, 701 in this case. So that is what we're going to obtain as your power in the kilowatts. So as you can see, these are the typical questions. Sometimes you might be given uh, questions of this nature direct. So it will be a combination. Mostly now they ask you uh, a question on uh, compressors, maybe with another question there. It's just a combination with another question, or they might give you a direct question on compressors only on that case, it's, it differs with the, how the question is going to be given as. So revise all topics, revise your governors, revise your boilers, uh, boiler calculations, uh, revise your velocity diagrams that is working with the steam uh, gas turbines. Make sure that you revise each and every topic because it can be a combination of one topic and another topic. So, and you're supposed to know each and every part. Do not expect that you're gonna have a single question as it is on uh, on air compressors. Re revise as much topics as you can. But uh, that's it, guys. We shall see more questions to come uh, as we are uh, moving on.